Welcome back to the course Learn Blockchain. Today we will be learning about the future person attack. So the future person attack is a hypothetical attack but it could happen, who knows. The miners and the blockchainers are feared or they discuss about this because it is so interesting and also because of the consequences it could have. So in this video we will talk about what is future person attack and what is not future person attack. Let's start with what is not future person attack. Futon person attack is not an attack designed to tamper a certain block of chain. This is not Futon person attack. The reason for this to mention is back in section 1 where we were learning the blockchain fundamental, the immutable ledger and this would peer to peer network, there we understood how difficult it would be if someone tries to tamper a block in a blockchain. He has to change the hash of that block along with the remaining block in the chain following that block and the same should be done in at least Futon person of the node. So that was just an example to show how powerful a distributed peer-to-peer -peer network is. In proper fit one person attack, what we talk about is fit one person of the hash rate, not fit one person of the node. The example we see back then is impossible, because the nodes need to be hacked for that attack. At least fit one person of the nodes from all across the world, which is not possible. This is not fit one person attack. I would like to mention again. Now let's see what actually is 15% attack. So here is what it is. Here we have miners, a whole network of miners. We have just considered few for better understanding. Then we have blockchain. These miners mine block and add them to the chain. Now let's consider another network of miners who are malicious or evil miners. And they join the previous network of miners. So they copy the blockchain, their mempool and everything. Let's say when they join the network, the latest block was this one. Now what these network of evil miners do is, they isolate from the other network. They don't broadcast their chain to the other network, they just keep mining their own block. So as time passes, this network of miners add block to the chain, let's say they add 2 block. At the same time, since there are more miners in the evil network, they will have more hash rate, considering individual miners are of same capability. So they will generate more block than the other network. Let's say they add 3 block, but they don't broadcast their chain to the other network yet. Now time passes, this network adds 3 block, whereas this one adds 5 block. And this continues with number of block always greater with the evil network. Here this evil miners do only their job, which is mining. Which is nothing illegal, they end breaking into other block. So what happens next? The evil miner network have greater number of block in the chain and they are not distributing the chain to the other network. The other network are unaware about this. After some time, all of the sudden, these evil miners network start broadcasting their chain to the whole network. Now there are conflict. The chain do not match it. So how do they solve this conflict? Yeah, if you are following the course properly, you already know it. Which is longest chain wins principle. So here the evil network got the longest chain, which means they win. So these chains are considered invalid. They will see up to this block it is matching and after that all the blocks are invalid. So they are replaced by the longest chain. Here all the networks of the miners are evil now. Since they have the evil network chain, knowingly or unknowingly, if you see here, nothing illegal has happened. Everything goes by the rule, then what is the problem here? What's wrong? Well, what's wrong is, these evil miners are smart from the beginning and they can get significant advantage from the double spend problem. How does that happen? We mentioned about the double spend problem previously on our front block and what that means is, these blocks are now cancelled out. All of the transactions in these blocks are released back to the mempool. Since they are in the mempool, they are no longer confirmed transaction. And here comes the interesting part. At the time before this block was added, these evil miners could perform lots of transactions, sending lots of bitcoin to order or buying something expensive means they spend lots of bitcoin. Those transactions could have gone to this block, but now since these blocks are cancelled out, the transaction gets out of the block but these miners have the things or assets from their spending. They have things they have bought. Like bicycle in the previous video, they just got to keep them. Then what happens to those transactions if they got to keep this thing? There must be transactions related to it in the blockchain. So these transactions that are back to the mempool can still get back to the another block, yeah? If it is so, then everything will be sorted out. But these evil miners won't allow to let this happen. Since they have greater hash rate, they would not select those transactions. If they are not selected, then they are not going into the block as they have higher chance of adding block than other network. 
and you know transactions don't remain in the mempool forever. After some time like 70-72 hours, if the transactions are not selected, then they are released back to the person that issues it. Which means the transaction never happens. The owner receives his Bitcoin back that he had spent. So here they spend lots of Bitcoin, purchase lots of things, they got those things, later the transaction never has happened. This is what I am saying they could get huge advantage from double spend problem. So what these evil miners need to do is not to let those transactions to be added to the block. If they are successful, then they got double advantage. They got to spend and again they got refund. So this is what 51% attack is. It's all about the hash rate. Because these evil miners have more than 50% hash rate among the whole network, they can perform this kind of attack. But in the blockchain like Bitcoin blockchain, it is less probable for this kind of attack. There are already immense hash rate and it is impossible for certain network to have more than 50% of the whole hash rate of the network. But for some blockchain like the startup, this could probably happen. So I hope you have understood what 51% attack is and what is not 51% attack. So on this note, I will see you in the next video.